here's a curious thing. Um, the following is our experience in the laboratory. Take an electron which has been prepared to be in a superposition of being here and here and measure its location. Okay, go look in this box, see if it's there. Go look in that box, see if it's there. It turns out that when you do that, um, um, sometimes you find it here and not there. Sometimes you find it here and not there. Okay? So, the act of looking, okay, seems to change the state of this electron from a superposition of being here and here, in which there is simply no fact of the matter about where it is, okay, just as there no, there's no fact of the matter about the marital status of the number five, okay. When we actually go and do a measurement, we do find it either here and not there, or there and not here. So we say, I see. So this act of performing a measurement um, um, is not just a passive process of taking in information. It seems to be producing a, a distinct and radical change in the state of the system that we're measuring itself, okay? That before we did this measurement, before we sort of asked by looking, is the particle here or is the particle there, we're convinced that we have good reasons for denying that there was any fact of the matter about where it was, okay? But it's also part of our laboratory experience that when we go and look, Sometimes we find it here and not there. Sometimes we find it there and not here. We never find a situation when we look for it that suggests that there isn't a fact of the matter about where it is. Even though various other experiments we could do on it at that point do suggest that there's no fact of the matter about where it is. Good. And one says, I wonder how that works. Um, I wonder how it is that this act of looking at it manages to do what people in the field started calling collapsing its state, okay, into either the, in, out of being in a superposition and to either the state of being here or being there. How does that work? How does the looking at it do that? Let's analyze that in detail. Let's say carefully what we mean by looking. What do we, we shine a light at it or we put some kind of detector there, so on and so forth. Okay, so it turns out that um, you can ask this question of the algorithm, okay? Suppose we design a certain kind of instrument. Okay, that's who's going to swing its pointer in this direction if the electron turns out to be here and is going to swing its pointer in that direction if the electron turns out to be there. We input the detailed physical design of this mechanism into our algorithm. We say we start with a superposition of the electron being here and here. We turn on the device, okay, the pointer is initially pointing straight up, neither this way nor that way, and we ask, how is this system going to physically evolve? We ask this algorithm, which we now trust, how is this system going to physically evolve? Our experience in the laboratory is that when we turn this on, sometimes the pointer swings this way and the particle is found to be there, sometimes the pointer swings this way and the particle is found to be there. Good. Let's analyze this from the point of view of the algorithm. Lo and behold, you do this analysis, and the algorithm says, you know what, um, my prediction, the algorithm's prediction, is that in circumstances like this, the pointer is going to enter into a superposition of pointing this way and pointing that way, okay? And this seems to conflict with our laboratory experience, okay? Um, 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 
It's not the case that the pointer is sometimes going to point this way and sometimes going to point that way. If the electron started out in a superposition, there's a simple mathematical argument, given the mathematical structure of this algorithm, that what the pointer ought to do for sure is go into a superposition of pointing in these two directions. And that's not what we appear to see. We say, huh, um, let's press this a little further. Suppose we think of the scientist, the sentient observer, who's looking at the pointer. We consider her to be a part of the physical system as well that's interacting with the pointer. Maybe that'll help clear this up. Let's throw the observer into the total physical system whose behavior we are using this algorithm to analyze. It turns out if you do that, okay, once again, the algorithm gives you an unambiguous prediction. Now, it would be a natural reaction to what I've said so far to say, I don't understand. How can they possibly apply this fundamental algorithm to a physical system like a sentient observer that consists of trillions upon trillions of it? What, you're actually doing those calculations? No, you're not. Um, um, but you can give a very powerful argument from certain features of the deep mathematical structure of this algorithm, in particular from a, a, a mathematical feature of this algorithm called its linearity, okay, that is going to tell you things even about what the observer's brain will do under these circumstances. And it turns out that the unambiguous deliverance of this algorithm is that the observer who is looking at the pointer ought to end up in a superposition of taking herself to see the pointer pointing this way and taking herself to see the pointer pointing that way. And at this point, your intuition simply revolts, okay? Well, that's not what happens. Okay, and what would it even feel like if that did happen? Okay, what is it? Would I get nauseous? Would I? I, yeah. mean, I mean, I don't. I don't even know what we're talking about here. But I do know that that's not what happens when I look at those pointers. I can tell you from my extensive laboratory experience that when I look at the pointer in a situation like that, I either see it pointing this way and indicating that the particle is here, or I see it pointing that way, indicating that the particle is there. And I don't know what it would feel like to be in one of these superpositions of brain states such that there's no fact of the matter about whether I see the pointer pointing this way or pointing that way, but whatever it would feel like, I, it's sure as hell not the state that I end up in when I actually go and do these experiments. Good. Um, um, this is the sense in which the story we started out with about how we know there's a table in the room collapses in the case of quantum mechanics, okay? In the case of quantum mechanics, if you tell the story step by step in accord with what we take the fundamental physical laws to be, okay, the place you end up with is not the place you want to be. The place you end up with is not the brain state in which either you see the pointer pointing this way or you see the pointer pointing that way. That's not what the algorithm gives you. What the algorithm gives you is something that you know by experience doesn't happen. Okay. Now, it might be easy to say, okay, so much the worse for this algorithm. The algorithm is obviously wrong, okay? We should throw it out and start with a new one. Well, that's a natural reaction. And in a certain way, I, th I think that's going to be the correct reaction. But it, it's not a trivial one because the extent to which this algorithm had been borne out, the accuracy of this algorithm had been borne out, by all sorts of experiments was, was tremendously impressive to people, okay? This algorithm was clearly 
the most precise, the most accurate physical theory that had ever made its appearance on the world stage in the history of, of human investigation. Okay, so, um, so there's a real puzzle here. What are we supposed to do with the fact, okay, that, um, um, that in circumstances like this, when the algorithm predicts that something is in a superposition and we look at it, we find it in one place or the other, okay? Um, good, and as I said a minute ago, it should be clear now what I meant in the beginning before we started talking about quantum mechanics at all. This aspiration to tell a story that starts with the table and the light in the room and ends up with my being in the mental state that I find myself in when I look in the direction of the table, the story is not going through in the quantum mechanical case. Good. Um, like I said, And now I'm going to talk a little about historical context. Yeah. Um, I